I want to introduce Etta James, my little baby. See those paws? <laughs> when she was a kitten, she got stuck in some logs or branches or something somewhere and could not get out. So she had to yank and yank and yank until she pulled out a claw. Poor little thing. She went and hid. Eventually when I found her, I got her to the vet and they said, yep, that's what's wrong with her. That might be the paw, I'm not sure. I'm looking for it, but I don't know which one. She has very delicate, delicate bones. Her paws and her legs are tiny. Not just because there isn't a lot of fur, but they really are delicate. Anyway, I found Etta along with her brother at a an individual's house who was giving away kittens. They didn't want to give away just one. They had three left and out of their litter and the one that I wanted was, it was just the cutest, feistiest thing. But they said, oh no, we're keeping that one. We have these two left. And so I picked a really cute, feisty black one, all black. And they said, no, um, we need you to take both of the two cats. You, ha you can't take just one. So we went ahead and, um, I mean, I called my husband first and he said, yeah, we can swing two cats. And I was a little nervous about it because I had another cat at home. All right, well, to back up a little bit, the reason why we were getting um, a new cat was because I had a, a cat at home that was had just lost her playmate. We had in my previous story about cats, I told you about uh, Duke and Ellington. Those are the two cats I used to have, and I brought, and then I had gotten a, a Billy Holiday kitty. And I know two, those two cats are the ones I brought to Podunk, Tennessee with me. Billy Holiday and Ellington. Well, it didn't take long before Ellington got ran over by a car. Oh, sweet babies. Such a sweet baby girl. Etta James. Etta James. So cute. Well, anyway. I brought those two cats with me. And Billy Holiday did pretty good here. She was she had some pretty good street smarts and so did Ellington, but he was black, and I guess there was just one too many cars around here and couldn't see him. And my husband went out looking because they just didn't come home. My cats always come home. They always come home. So it worried me. Yeah, he didn't come home. He found him on the side of the road, brought him home. I held him in my arms because he wasn't too mangled, but he was surely dead. And I took him to the backyard and buried him. Cried, cried, oh my. Just, you know, having made a new move and everything. It just was too much. Oh, look at her pressing her head against my hand. Isn't that interesting? That's something she does. 
She loves to um, cl climb up on my shoulders and press, press, press her head hard against my face or my neck, whatever. It's not quite the same as marking your territory with your whiskers, but that. <laughs> it's so cute. <laughs> oh, baby. Oh, my baby. But anyway, so Ellington died and Billy was by herself and me being the kind of person who assigns human feelings to animals was thinking, oh poor Billy, she'll be so lonely all by herself. Well, I was dead wrong. Because when I brought home this year Eddie James and I brought home who we named Ellison, Billy Holiday was not happy about it at all. When I was getting the cats, I thought they they told me they were both girls, so I thought they were sisters, but this bro uh, brother and sister, when I went to get him neutered, they told me, <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't know. <laughs> I never had bothered to look, I just took their word for it, so. Um. Oh, baby, so sweet, I love you so much. It's so precious. Anyway, Billy was not happy. So I had, um, I called the owners, like, the very next day because the, these kittens were getting slashed at. <laughs> Billy's not normally a mean cat, but she did not want anybody replacing her Ellington. So I went out and bought a cage and kept... Ellison and Etta James in, in the cage for about a month. Here she wants to go start cleaning herself. I think I'm going to try to divert her. her. <laughs> Nobody wants to see you licking your rear end. So do your tail instead. <laughs> Cute. Oh, my baby. Well, the the two kittens got a little older and Billy adjusted to them being in the house at least, so finally I was able to let them out. I let them out sometimes anyway, uh, when Billy wasn't around. Good. Couldn't bear the thought of leaving them in a cage. It was just awful. Although the cage was huge. I, um... Yeah, so... They finally all started getting along pretty good. Well, I, Billy never adjusted. I mean, she didn't like these guys, but she didn't bother him anymore, so that was good. And so, Etta James and, um... Ellison played together quite a bit. They were so much fun. Oh my goodness, they played and entertained. Oh my goodness, sibling cats that like each other. What a riot. Absolutely loved it. Well, I believe it was shortly after my mother died that Ellison got run over by a car too. Black cat. Black cats just can't be seen as easily, especially at night. So what are you going to do? 
I swear next time I get a cat, I will keep them indoors. Uh, not as a rule, but because of the street I live on. There's something about this street. Well, I'll tell you what it is about this street, even though it's, there, there's two streets on either side of me, and even though that I live in a historic district, the cars just, they don't not, they don't care that the sign says 20 miles an hour. Some of these people come through there at 50 and 60. A couple of times I was walking up, walking with a friend and the car just get, I mean, got super close to us and revved his engine just as he passed us and laughed. Oh my gosh, it's just kind of, you know, I guess that's just youth, but people do drive too fast around here. Well, so when Ellington died, I, I mean Ellison, their names are so close, I get them mixed up. But when Ellison died, well, pff, coincidence that they're both, their names are so close and they're both black cats, but <laughs> what do I do now? She stopped petting me. <laughs> Oh no, I don't want to get on a laughing um, spree here. Um, anyway, that'd be better than crying because I hate to say how sad it was that Ellison, Ellison had been hit by a car, but he somehow was able to make it back home and laid under the bush in our backyard, and I guess I'd been dead maybe for a day or two before I found him, and I don't even know how I found him because he had been hidden under the bushes. He was covered with, oh, I don't even want to talk about it. It's too gross. Nevertheless, I stared at him for a long time and just looked at him in love and When it came time to bury him, well, you know, my mother had just died, so, um, this just hit me like a ton of bricks, and we were living in a very non-private yard. We have since put up a bunch of fences all around the property, or mostly around the property, but at the time the, the cat had died, I, I, was, I was walking from the back of the house to the backyard, a dead cat in my arms, tears streaming down my face, just blinded by tears. And, my neighbor crawls out to me from across his yard. Hey, Rebecca. Hey, hey, Rebecca. Oh, my God. The last thing in the world I wanted to do was go over and say hey, but I just came out and told him. I said, I'm, my cat has just died, and I'm, I can't talk. I'm sorry. Oh, he apologized profusely. He had no clue. And then he explained that he didn't have his glasses on, so he couldn't see that I had a dead cat in my arms. Um, I buried him. I could barely see the whole time I was burying him, too, but I... This is the first time I think I've actually buried a cat and actually made, like, a headstone. <laughs> I mean, like, a little headstone for him for a little while out of a log. And this log just happened to look like, uh, it was shaped like a human body. It was shaped like a woman's body. So I put that log right over his grave and... <laughs> I'm not a superstitious person and I... Yeah. Uh, 
but it was it was just symbolic, uh, no belief at all that there was a person watching over Allison. But the fact that the log looked like a woman, I just said, "Kate, Allison, this is me. I'm I'm over you." <laughs> didn't mean anything spiritual or, or anything. It was just purely um, symbolic for me. I sure hope this kitty does not leave me anytime soon. So, um, After that, uh, shortly after that was when, uh, no, actually it was before that, it was before Allison died that we got extra when she was hanging on my door. And we took her in and that was uh, when Billy Holiday started having really a hard time. She just did not want another cat, but she she dealt with it for a little while, just for a little while. We had to separate her for a while, um, put her up in the attic, but she acted out. She wouldn't use her litter box. She started peeing on the floor, and <laughs> which is okay. She is not happy. Maybe because Ellington died. <clears throat> and then I bring in, you know, three other cats. And she just realized she would have been so much happier if I just let her be a little... Oh, it's so cute. Oh, my baby. <laughs> I swear sometimes she still looks like a kitten when she plays like this. It's like, leave me alone. Leave me alone. <laughs> so anyway we took Billy out of the attic and it wasn't too long after that and she maybe just a few days of her hanging out and just getting disgusted with so many other cats in the house that she ran away and that was it and then it was shortly after Billy ran away that Allison got ran over and all of this. I mean, it was just like mom dies, cat dies, another cat dies, another cat runs away. I'm just going, okay, had enough now. That's good for me. I know suffering makes us stronger depending. But I didn't want any more. <laughs> that was good for me. Baby girls. Sweet babies. So then I was down to Etta, James here, and Extra. Now I'm down to both of those cats. Just yesterday, this one she disappeared for a day, and I was beside myself, just going, Where are you? Where are you? She just. I think she saw the. the um, what do you call those? Uh, it was a, a, a cat carry crate. It's time for, to get them there leukemia shots, a couple other boosters, you get them once a year, or once every six months, once a year, I think, and so I had the cat carrier out, and I got extra in, she may have, Etta here may have seen and heard extra crying, because she gets so scared when she gets put in a cat carrier, they both do, they hate the vet, they both hate the vet. I don't know if I've ever had an animal that liked going to the vet. 
Maybe a dog. Cats don't like to go to the vet. They're just too moody. So she was gone for a day and a half and my husband saw her and he says, there she is outside. I go, okay, great. At least she's alive. So I eventually uh, trapped her when she came in to um, get some food and get a little bit of loving in the middle of the night thinking that she could skulk away without me noticing. I was like, no way. I held her down and my husband went and closed the cat door because I wasn't about to let her back. I thought, whatever she's going through, she needs to learn to to trust again and that I'm not going to hurt her or anything. If she thought that I was going to put her in the carrier and take her to the vet, which I still have to do. Her turn is next. But I just needed to give her time to trust me again. Baby girls. Sweet baby girls. She has a problem with vomiting every once in a while, and it's not just cat hair. There's doesn't matter what kind of food I give her, she, I'm just afraid she's just not a real healthy cat. When I looked at her to get her as a kitten, I didn't want her because I thought she was kind of homely. <laughs> she didn't have uh, what you call the, um, the instincts to come to me or be all lovey or anything when I first saw her. I thought, well, she doesn't have any attraction to me, um, but uh, the other cat did. So, um, I, so that's why I didn't want her at first. It's like, okay, well. But then they informed me I had to take both cats. So I, it's like, okay, you're coming with me, you little runt. You plain gray little runt. <laughs> Although I still loved her because she was just a kitten. I mean, love all kittens, love all cats. Even if they're ugly, I love them. But she was. I thought she was homely. And I just kept joking about it, saying, Homely little kitty, you're so homely. <laughs> Now, she became the most beautiful to me. I mean, I don't know if anybody else thinks she's beautiful, but to me, she is strikingly gorgeous, especially in certain lights and certain poses or hmm, just at times when she looks at me with big wide eyes and I think the shape of her face. Just, just right. She's beautiful. And then because she's so affectionate, you wouldn't have known it. I mean, if you go to the animal shelters and you think, okay, I'm going to pick out the cat that looks the prettiest, or I'm going to pick out the cat that likes me the most, or I'm going to pick out the cat this, that, whatever you think of that is a criteria. Uh, she didn't fit any of them. We had no... <laughs> she says, leave me alone. <laughs> oh, I'm so dangerous. See how big her eyes get? They're so cute. She didn't fit any of the criteria for uh, for bonding. I wouldn't. I just wouldn't have thought. But when I got her home, oh, not even right when I got her home, but sometime later, she.
became super affectionate and she was all over me, really. Now she's not just, she's not just a lap cat. In fact, she rarely gets on my lap. If she gets on me, she has to be on my shoulder. When you see her in videos, it's because she has to be part of everything I do. Everything. And she doesn't want to be just a little bit part of it. She wants to be all about it. She's even done some ASMR with me when she at the end of that video where I'm playing with the scraps. Oh, I was so sick when I made that video. I was really sick, but I thought, well, I just got to make something. And I didn't have any clue what I was going to do. And she is the one who pulled out that plastic bag full of um, scraps of tracing paper and started playing with it. And I was going, oh, listen to that sound. And she's the one who inspired me to at least do something. So that's that's what I did. And it wasn't a great video. It was just a bunch of boring fiddling around with scraps. But I sure loved the sound of it. She, she was my inspiration. So. Yeah. New baby girls. She likes it when I, um put my hand at the blanket, under the blanket like that, and she knows it's my hand, but she pretends it's something else. So, it's cute. Anyway, um, yeah, it's fun. She's a fun kitty. So cute. So I still think of Billie Holiday sometimes, try to imagine, I mean, I went searching for her all over the place, all over the neighborhood, asked everybody, and called all kinds of imaginable places to try to locate my, my Billie. She was so unhappy when she left, I figured it might be just for the best, who knows. Oh, baby's so cute. So she's been gone for a long time, but you know what, she was so street smart. I really choose to believe that somebody adopted her. Um, I mean, because she was so beautiful, even prettier than Etta James here, or my extra kitty. She, was just, she had a, a very unusual black and white markings with um, what do you call, uh, oh, she was just furry, you know, there was probably, there's probably a name of the breed, and I, I can't, I don't, I don't think I ever knew what it was, but long-haired, black and white, with a, with a really neat horseshoe, horseshoe-shaped, um, black mark, it's hard to explain, maybe I can find a picture and put it on the end of this video, But anyway, I believe she's either in in heaven waiting at my mansion <laughs> or someone else has got her. But I really like to think that someone else is taking care of her and that she's found a home. A good one. I pray that God watches after her because I was so powerless to do anything about it. I remain very comforted by this blessed kitty. She's so sweet. My head of James. My head of James, so sweet. See how she hugs my shoulder. That's her spot. That's my kitty. That's my Etta. The meaning of the word Etta 
is little, little one. She's my little one. My precious little baby. How oh, I love my little girl. How oh, I love my little Etta James. Stay with me, baby. Stay with me, sweetheart. I love you. I love you, my baby girl.